What's going on, Wolfpack? My name is Generic Wolf, and welcome to some more Bosnian Reacts 2 Geography Now Ivory Coast or Cote d'Ivoire because this place used to be French or something. Now, uh, this, all, this place is also known for like uh, chocolate, not just ivory, but also like chocolate and like Didier Drogba and I don't know anybody else from uh, <laughs> Cote d'Ivoire. So, uh, yeah, this will be a new experience for me. So, usually. Uh, African states are a new experience, so Paul. Really strange fact nice about Michael Jackson in this video. You'll have to find out by watching this video. Ha! You can't click away. I got you curious. Michael Jackson? <laughs> is he from the Ivory Coast? Uh, of course he isn't. <laughs> His ancestors? I am your host, Barbie, and I know, I know, I would have to do this video later on the letter C for Côte d'Ivoire, but as you know, this is an English show. So, we are going to use the word Ivory Coast, okay? Whew, three months of Duolingo. Ha! I love this app. <laughs> I use now, if you don't know anything about Ivory Coast, basically it's like Ghana's French-speaking rival and the land of chocolate. So anyway, ah, the Ivory I Coast is that. located in West Africa, bordered by five other countries and the Gulf of Guinea to the south. The country is divided into 12 districts plus two district-level autonomous cities. Each of these cities is kind of considered like a capital, making Ivory Coast a dual capital country. The first one being Abidjan, the largest city along the coast, known as the economic capital, and Yamasukuro, the political capital with all the government buildings, which was deliberately built to centralize the location of political power. The weird thing is, although the cities have mayors, since 2011, the 12 non-autonomous well, districts... I want to mention that sometimes they move the capital, it is assumed, yeah, because more central centralization of power, so all the roads and every everything, networks can uh, reach the capital easier. But some assume that the, the, the political elites move the capital to another city so they can just get away from, you know, all the potential uh, protests and... Uh, uh, unrest that can potentially appear in the uh, current capital of the country which is usually like the most which is usually the most populated so they want to move out so to a lesser populated place uh, it's kind of like what Brazil tried to do kind of like what uh, Egypt is like trying to do right now I heard they're like building some place outside of Egypt so where the political elite can go but um, I don't know centralization of power sure whatever <laughs> still have yet to appoint governors so technically by legal definition the districts are more like theoretical entities rather than actual functioning ones and if you really think about it that kind of means they don't actually exist it's like hey let's split this pie sure now in my head i split it into two pieces you have to guess where i cut it after Abidjan, known as the Paris of Africa, the second largest city would be Boaké and Doloa, which also have the largest and only two international airports being Abidjan Port Bouet or Félix Houphouët Boigny International Pewdiepie? and Boaké International. The borders with Liberia mostly run along the Kavala and Sestos rivers, the Laraba with Burkina Faso, and a portion of the Black Volta with Ghana. Keep in mind that much like Ghana, historically before European colonialism, the Ivory Coast was split into various kingdoms and tribal territory clusters, which if we really want to get technical, looks like this. But if we really want to summarize the parent group, it looks a little bit something like this with four-ish main branches. The Kwa, the Kru, the Gur, and the Mande. The Kwa branch Akan peoples are kind of like the cousins of the Ashanti people that we mentioned in the Ghana episode, and they make up the largest group in the Ivory Coast. The most notable tribe being the Baule, founded by Queen Poku. Oh, and at one point in the late 60s, the Sanwi people tried to break away and become independent, and I'm not even joking, they declared Michael Jackson to be their king in 1992. So if there's one thing you need to do from this episode, it's that Michael Jackson literally was a king in Africa. Anyway, surprisingly, the country doesn't really have any offshore islands or islets. The only real islands can be found around Abidjan Lagoon. The cool thing though is that most of Ivory Coast coasts that sounds a little weird, has wonderful open unspoiled beaches. The bad news is almost all of it is inaccessible due to the choppy river estuaries and lack of natural ports hindering the development of beach towns. That means that other than Abidjan, there are virtually no coastal roads. Otherwise, some top notable sites of the Ivory Coast might include places like any of the national parks like the largest one, Comoe, St. Paul's Cathedral, the Civilian Museum, the Crocodile House, the Jardin Botanique de Bingaville, Paradisia Abidjan, Sassandra has a ton of historical buildings and monuments, the beaches of Grand Bassam, the waterfalls at Man, the Pyramid Building, and finally the Basilique Notre Dame de la Paix, or the Basilica of Our Lady of Peace, the largest basilica in the world, larger than St. Peter's in the Vatican. Sweet, I think that just about covers all of it. And speaking of sweet, let's get chocolatey. <laughs> The Ivory Coast got its name from the historically major export of ivory back centuries ago before it became super illegal. But in all honesty, it should be called the Cocoa Coast. 
<laughs> that sounds better. Coco Coast, or en français, Côte de Cacao. Even that sounds cool. Ugh, Côte de, Côte de Chocolat. <laughs> anyway, the Ivory Coast lies in sub-Saharan Africa, and much like all the other West African countries, the land is mostly flat with undulating plains in the south with lush tropical forests, whereas the northern regions are drier and semi-arid savannas and grasslands. Basically, by the coast, humid most. Northward bound, drier ground. Keep in mind that rule doesn't apply everywhere. Namibia be like, by the coast, dry. Northward, drier. As much <laughs> The highest point in the yeah. west is Mount Nimba, which is basically the African version of South America's Mount Roraima, which is like the peak shared by three countries. The country is fed by three main rivers and their estuaries, the Sasandra, Kamoe, and the longest river, the Bandama, which flows into the largest lake in the central part of the country. Is that how you spell Osu, estuary? Which artificially created after I thought it was EST. Was built on the river in 1973. Because water is pretty much everywhere, this allows Ivory Coast to flourish in flora and fauna, with over 1,200 animal species and 4,700 plants, everything from jackals, monkeys, chameleons, panthers, pygmy hippos, and the national animal, the African elephant, can be found. Despite the abundance of water, only about 10% of the land is arable, as about a third of the country is forested. Nonetheless, 75% of the workforce uses that arable land to grow everything from coffee, oil palms, rubber, and their pride and joy, the national crop that they are the number one producer in the world, cocoa. Since they export so, so much, so I eat a lot of Ivory Coast. It total, seems. <laughs> chances are, without even knowing it, you may have already eaten some kind of chocolate confection made from second. cocoa grown here. It's such a common commodity that half the time farmers don't even know what it's used for. They've never had chocolate. They just grow it because they know it's an in-demand product. Vpro Metropolis did a great video showing I saw it. I saw that. Try chocolate for the first time. Vous n'avez jamais goûté au chocolat. Non, non. On n'a jamais goûté au chocolat. Si c'est pas aujourd'hui. C'est doux. C'est doux là. Vous aimez Check it out. It's a great video. It's a cool report. But going back to food, dishes in the Ivory Coast pretty much follow the same West African format. You know, lots of cassavas, plantains, slow simmered stews and sauces with peanuts, grilled or dried fish and chicken. However, two things they definitely specialize in and love are atieke cassava mash with kajenu stew and the famous Ivorian land snails, which can grow huge and are typically grilled or eaten with sauce. The interesting thing is My that God. even after two <laughs> civil wars in the 21st century, the Ivory But there is a larger snail if you uh, look up... Uh... I forget the name of uh, whoever coyote, whatever coyote, Brave Wilderness. There it is, and he actually found uh, the largest slug in the world, which is huge. But uh, enough about slugs. Coast still moves forward as the largest economy in the West African Economic Monetary Union, which is basically the French-speaking countries of ECOWAS. Hey! Oh, whatever. All your people are like quadrilingual. I'm pretty sure you speak enough French to get by. By the way, ECOWAS has a really cool looking headquarters <laughs> building in Togo. Anyway, yeah, the Ivory Coast actually Senegal? didn't fall in the same pattern of many other African states in which a government uprising led to a dictator that ruined everything. One man actually kind of got things moving along. And we'll talk more about him in... Okay, first of all, Ivorian. That's what you call these people. Ivorians, not Ivory Coastians. Just getting that Ivory Coasters? Out there. Anyway, the country has about 25 million people and has about 60 different tribes. These tribes are divided into five principal ethnic groups, the largest one being the Akan people Akan. at about 42%, <laughs> the Gurs at about 18%, the Northern Mandes at about 16%, like Gurus at about 11%, and Southern Mandes at 10%. Whereas the rest are made up of other people groups, mostly other Africans from abroad and non-Africans like Lebanese and French people. They use the West African CFA franc as their currency, they use a Type-C plug outlet, and they drive on the right side of the road. Now, the Ivorian people are quite diverse However, as a former French colony, the French language kind of unites them all. Nonetheless, out of the 65-ish languages spoken throughout the country, the Kwa languages have the most speakers. And the second probably belongs to the Dula language in the West, which is related to the Mande and Mandinka languages that we already discussed in the Gambia and Guinea episodes, which is sometimes written in the cool-looking Nko script created by this guy in 1949, making it one of the few indigenous African writing systems. See, small stuff like that. That's why I love this show. I have the best job ever. Religion plays an interesting <laughs> role as about a third we'll see, of the population. Barbs identifies as Christian or Catholic, about 39% are Muslim, while a quarter are animist. All three of these groups live alongside each other relatively peacefully. In a nutshell, during the tribal kingdom era, the first. Muslim traders came in from the north around the first millennia. Around the 15th century, Portuguese and French people stopped by and started trading. The French got Slaves. a little overprotective because they didn't <laughs> want the English to dominate the Gulf of Guinea. Then there was that short-lived Wasalu Empire that tried to revolt. This guy became the father of independence, and in 1960, they broke free from the French. From there, he became the leader for about 33 years. However, things were actually, in contrast to other African states, pretty good. I mean, sure, he had some controversies, but overall, the country became the most prosperous in West Africa. People were living better. The economy was booming. I mean, technically, he was Chocolate. a dictator, but he kind of didn't suck. Then oh, the like 90s Joseph came, Bruce. and his successor totally sucked. <laughs> Long story short, 1999 coup d'etat. Then this guy stepped in. Then this guy was elected. Things got worse. 2002 civil war. Things got worse. 2010 election.
elections, this guy was voted in, then there was a short second civil war, but then things kind of calmed down and the economy is back and booming again. It's weird. It's like the whole time all these wars were happening, they were still maintaining composure and doing international business. And that's kind of the theme of the Ivory Coast. A little war can't hurt them. After President Ouattara took over, he actually did kind of a good job doubling the infrastructure budget from 15% to over 30%, and the economy grew at its peak at around 9% regularly. They were like, look, people, we don't have time for this. Which one do you like? Guns or money? Hmm. I can sell the guns. Otherwise, the Ivory Coast <laughs> is laden with amazing colorful tribes, traditions, and customs. Some of the most notable tribes being the Bilfo tribe with their adobe clay houses, the Dan tribe with their spinning warrior and stilt dances, the what? acrobatics of the Korhogo tribe, the terracotta funerals by the Akan people, the Sanufo people with their rich Korhogo cloth, the Yakuba girl juggling dance, <laughs> the Baule tribe loves brass art. Many tribes come together for gold. the huge Fete de Masque or the Masque Festival, which is the biggest one in the country. There's also the it Fete, Fete du Dupree in Gomon, where people run around naked at midnight. You're Never short of music and art. In fact, the Ivorian movie Black and White in Color became the first winner of an Oscar by a Black Republic. Abidjan is also kind of seen as like the fashion capital of Sub-Saharan Africa, both in Western and Native designs. Due to their close ties to France, the latest get-ups can be found on runways and boutiques all across the city. Some notable people of Ivorian descent from the Ivory Coast might include people like their only gold medal winner, Sheik Salah Sisse, Alpha Blondie, actor Bamba Jan Bamba, Constance Amio, Siddiqui Bakaba, Amadou Kuruma, Bernard Dadier, Vecho Lolas, and the pride and glory of the Ivory Coast, ah, Didier there he Drogba. Is. In the end, the Ivory Coast knows how to manage themselves and dust off pretty well with a touch of class. Let's see how classy they are with others. No surprise, the Ivory Coast is a West African powerhouse that has high position of authority of influence in the region. First of all, the country generally gets along with the other Francophone neighbors around them, especially landlocked Burkina Faso and Mali, as they kind of act as like the gateway to the ocean for them and their trade needs. Ghana is like their closest frenemy. They share some of the same tribes and people groups. Business is always moving back and forth between them. But when it comes to regional dominance, the Ivory Coast will never hesitate to push Ghana out of the spotlight. There was even that time in the 90s when a riot broke out over a soccer match between the two. When it comes to their best Typical. friends, however, surprisingly, many might say France. The Ivory Coast has always had like a privileged role as like the jewel of France's African relations. Their founding father insisted relations be maintained. Presidents have visited each other. Their militaries have cooperated in conflicts. Numerous. Has anybody noticed how a different uh, color these European nations are to these African nations? It's like a different uh, saturation going on here. It's like they're more saturated. I guess I guess I guess they literally are more saturated because they probably get more rain than <laughs> than the European nations, but still. <laughs> Citizens on both sides weird, have immigrated it? to each other's countries, and they love sharing everything from cuisine to the latest fall fashion line. In conclusion, the Ivory Coast kind of fell into a reputation crisis in which they were like, look guys, we were doing so well for decades, we are not going to end up like all the other African countries that let war destroy them. Now shut up and start making money. Stay tuned, Jamaica. I like that. Next. I'll, I'll, I like that. Make money. That I do like. Okay, Jamaica coming up next, man. Oh, man, we're going to get so high next episode. <laughs> hey, everybody, welcome back to Flag Slash Fan Friday. Hope you like the Ivory Coast episode. I still can't believe that fact about Michael Jackson. It literally happened. And it also happened again in 2013 as his son was inaugurated as a prince via Skype. See, I love Africa. <laughs> Only stuff like that can happen. And it's not even... And people are telling me that Africans are not eccentric people. That they're, you know, more, usually more... Well, I bet they are usually more conservative. But with the hint of eccentrism in their uh, nations, which is not necessarily a bad thing. It makes... Makes the world more interesting. Shocking. Anyway, today we covered the Ivorian flag and the coat of arms, so without further ado... So before we get into this, one thing I really wanted to talk about but I didn't have time in the Ivory Coast episode was the legend of Queen Poku. She was queen of the Baule people, which make up one of the largest tribes in the Ivory Coast. According to legend, a long time ago, her and her people were fleeing from the Ashanti people in Ghana. As they approached the Kamoe River, they were told that in order to cross, you must sacrifice your most prized possession. For Queen Poku, that was her son. So, according to legend again, she had to throw her son into the river, and when that happened, hippos rose up and they were allowed to cross the river. After the crossing, all she could say was Baule which means the child is dead and that's how the tribe gets their name yeah that and I also wanted to talk that's about how cool. Abidjan has like disputably the most developed skyline in all of West Africa anyway the flag the flag of the ivory uh Lagos so hold my whatever African drink whatever Africans drink I don't know beer some court some sort of uh 
African drink, I don't know. Coast is a vertical <laughs> tricolor of orange, white, and green. Yes, it is the exact mirror image of the Ireland flag. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just the noticed. It was modeled after the French tricolor and later inspired the flag of Niger. The orange stands for the savannas found in the north of the country. The white stands for peace. And the green stands for the forests of the south and hope. Simplemente. Except for the time that they're under the French Empire, this is the first and only flag that they have ever had. Also, it might be important to note that this is one of the only few flags in the region that does not utilize the pan-Africanist movement colors of red, black, and green or red golden green some say it might have to do with the fact that they didn't want to follow in the lead of ghana who kind of started it all even though they were inspired off of ethiopia but that's just kind of a joke maybe anyway moving on the coat of arms the image contains a green shield with the head of their national animal the african elephant which was symbolically important for the ivory trade that they used to be a part of hence where they got their name behind the shield lies a rising sun symbolizing the new beginning on the sides two golden palm trees and a golden banner below with the phrase republique de cote d'ivoire which i'm sure you need no translation for. Now, unlike the flag, they Some have had might. historical <laughs> variants of their coat of arms. The first one depicted many flags on it with a blue shield and bubbly trees. The second one, an elephant that wasn't gold. And the final one with the elephant that became gold. Done! Hey, I'm just saying, like, the sale of ivory is mostly illegal now, and they are, like, the number one cocoa producer in the world. I personally like the name Cocoa Coast, but, uh, yeah, I'm not <laughs> the guy in charge. Anyway, with all that being said... And that is the end of the episode. Okay, but uh, next episode is going to be a fun one. So grab your Jamaican hats, put on some uh, Rastafarian music because we're going to Jamaica, man. Okay, thank you for watching and take care.